The life you want is yours. With Johanna Kern. Welcome to The Life You Want is Yours. This is Johanna Kern, and our show is dedicated to living, loving, and having the most happy, healthy, successful, and abundant life. It is possible to live such life, and it isn't very difficult to build it, of course, when we have the appropriate tools and knowledge to do so. We are giving you such tools and tips during our shows. Patrick Kern, my husband, as usual, accompanies me on our show. Welcome, everyone. I hope you are doing great. We are meeting on air every week at the same time. Let's have a brief recap of our previous shows. Johanna told us that In this show, we don't disregard anybody's preferences or beliefs. We only show you various angles and help you to expand your consciousness. This show is meant for everybody, no matter what is your background, age, gender, belief system, or lack of it. It is important to us that you will understand that. Whether you lean towards scientific theories or philosophical beliefs, the most important thing to remember is this. Life is a journey. Its distance is measured by the beauty of your heart not by the length of it, not even by how successful you become in it. Your purpose is to constantly evolve and experience yourself. Only we can decide which route we want to choose, what we want to experience on our journey, where we want to arrive, and in whose company. Remember, you are worth living the most wonderful life. We don't need to be stuck in a stream of circumstances and perpetuate what's no longer satisfying. Contrary to some beliefs, our destiny is not a fixed thing. It doesn't take hard work or struggle to change what we want. We also learned how we create our reality with our thoughts. From Einstein, Tesla, and other scientists, such as Peter Higgs and Francois Englert, who received the Nobel Prize in 2013, we know that everything that exists is simply energy. That includes all that is material, measurable by our senses, and all that we can only perceive our thoughts, emotions, or electrons. Did you know that nobody ever has seen or weighed an electron? Everything being a part of one huge energy field vibrates, including our thoughts. They behave like radio waves, just like with radio waves, the frequency of vibrations of our thoughts determines their quality and outreach. And just like with radio waves, our thoughts are being sent out to reach, well, whatever they can reach. And what they can reach depends on the frequency of their vibrations. And that decides how our thinking affects the reality, or rather the illusion, that we create and co-create whether we are aware of it or not. According to recent developments in science, the structure of the universe with all its laws and forces implies that intelligence existed prior to matter. And only because people identify with their body, they believe that when their body perishes, their consciousness well, too, consciousness is what it is, a vibration, a current, a signal. Not long ago, 
the medical field talked about consciousness as being related to our senses. There is even an existing term we use when someone faints. We say then that the person is unconscious. However, now, as we can see, we need to make a difference between the consciousness of our senses and the consciousness that we are, beyond our senses, not being limited to our body. And that is the consciousness we talk about during our shows. We also compare the latest discoveries in science with what some of the many philosophical or religious beliefs have been saying about infinity. While science talks about everything being a part of one huge energy field, many belief systems talk about God being all there is and containing everything within. No matter whether it is science or a belief system that resonates the most with our own inner truth, some things remain the same. We are all part of one whole, and we are all connected. And you know what? It might be that what resonates with you is the scientific approach, or it might be that you are more drawn to a spiritual or religious belief. It is important to remember that there is no right or wrong answer. There is no better or worse approach. All that you believe or think about what's true to you is valid, real, and most important for you. Our show is dedicated to living, loving, and having the happiest, healthy, successful, and abundant life. It is easy to get used to any situation we are in, and it is more difficult to welcome change and step into uncertain ground. Yet, it can be done. As a matter of fact, it has been done by many others that you might admire and even envy their successful and happy lives. And Johanna told us that... A very important to know is that while we are changing our negative thought pattern, we need to reprogram our subconscious thinking as well. As you may already know, our subconscious has often much greater power over us than our conscious thoughts, and that's because it is often packed with all of our fears and the negative programming we acquired in our childhood. We might have stored in it all the criticism from our parents, caregivers, teachers, or society. And that's why now we may believe that we are not worth living a good life, and that we need to be miserable, depressed, tired, overwhelmed, and not worthy having our dreams fulfilled. Remember, we are all worthy of living the life we want. It is our birthright to be happy, healthy, successful, and loved. When we think new positive thoughts, we begin to produce different chemical substances and new neural pathways in our brain are being created. Just as we start creating a new shortcut through a long, using a new, more comfortable path, the more we use this new path, the more often we repeat positive thoughts, the stronger the new neural pathways become. For such a process to be effective, we need approximately six weeks of constant repetition. That is exactly the time needed for new neural pathways to be created and the old ones to disappear. But to fully change our lifestyle and completely free ourselves from negative thinking, we need at least six months to let the new neural pathways to become permanent. It is our birthright to have the most magnificent life. 
and we just need to learn how to claim it. And by claiming it, we execute our basic rights to be cherished by the world, to be appreciated by those around us, and by ourselves. When we learn to appreciate ourselves, we know how to live beautifully and appreciate others. We also gave you the next step in the game, Nine Pennies Can Change Your Life, a game that can help you change any life situation and achieve anything you want. And we will give you the next step in that game later in this show. But now, let's talk about our next topic, how to deal with situations in life when we experience any sort of setbacks, delays, or any other kind of roadblocks that may change our life. I also encourage you to visit my blog on my official site www.johannakern.com where I write, among other things, about how to overcome our subconscious fears, maintain our happiness in life despite stressful situations, and live the life we want. On our shows, we talk about such and other topics in more details, and I also answer your questions in the later part of each show. I will do so as well today. Thank you for sending me the emails. Of course, you will all remain anonymous. We don't reveal your identity while answering your questions. For those of you who would like to send me your questions and get an answer on air, you can email me at radio at johannakern.com. After the break, we'll talk about what the obstacles, delays, and various roadblocks in our life are about and how to deal with them. The life you want is yours with Johanna Kern. Today we'll talk about situations that, despite appearances, may actually help us to change what's not working in our life. Those may be all sort of setbacks, delays, or any obstacles that affect our life to a great extent. In such times, it is best to look at our situation from a different angle, not to see it as a problem, but as an opportunity. Here is why. When your life does not unfold in an easy way, when you are going through hardship, it is a sign of your own inner truth, not being in harmony with what you are doing with your life. It does not mean that you are doing something wrong. Oh no, you can't ever be wrong about your life. It is your life, you are living it the best way you can at any given moment, and you and only you decide how and what you want to experience. Trust your own process, despite setbacks, delays, or any obstacles on your way, or discouragement from anybody who doesn't believe in you. Trust yourself and trust your life. Don't ever give up on who you are becoming and trust your inner wisdom. When you are experiencing a set of setbacks and life seems to be very hard, ask yourself these questions. Have I ever truly let myself be who I am? What am I about? What is my life about? Answer these questions honestly. Have you ever looked, truly looked into your own eyes in the mirror and tried to understand the person you saw? Not merely looking at the reflection of yourself, but the real you? We tend to think of ourselves in superficial ways. We judge how we look, we judge how we behave, we judge how we perform our tasks, how much money we make, what we know, who we know, what we wear, what we drive, where we live. But we rarely ask ourselves what is truly important to us. 
that is until we hit a roadblock that makes us stop and realize that we were blindly moving forward, not knowing where we were going. All we wanted was to feel safe, to matter, to be acknowledged. And that need was never satisfied. Whatever we did, there was always something missing, lacking. But we kept going on anyway, because everyone else did that. And so we didn't question anything, thinking that if all people we know were living that way, then it must be right. However, there is a time in our life, and that happens for all of us, no matter whether it happens sooner or later, that we come to a point when we hit a roadblock that is bigger than anything we have ever experienced. It usually manifests itself as a dramatic situation. It could be that we lose someone we love, or that we lose our job, or that we get seriously ill, or that we have our dreams crushed, or that we get depressed for no other reason than that we can't cope anymore with life as it is, and feel overwhelming stress. And although we think that this is the end, in reality, it is the real beginning. We stop, we look back, and we see that we had gotten nowhere, no matter what we have achieved, or not, no matter how much money we made, or none. There comes a point when we stop in our tracks, and that happens so that we could give ourselves a chance to start all over again. If we don't do that, if we don't give ourselves that chance, if we continue with our life as before, there'll be another roadblock. Only, next time it will be bigger. And if we still haven't learned that this is the best time to look inside and find out what's really true to us, what it is that we really need, the story continues. Next time, there'll be even larger roadblock, and so on, until we won't be able to deal with the magnitude of another roadblock, and that will be the end of the road for us. We all have seen or known people who ended up in such a way. Unfortunately, there are many of them. As a society, we have been programmed to forget who we really are, to numb ourselves with whatever we can, shopping for often useless things, compulsively watching TV, overeating, overdosing, drinking too much, dating the wrong people, playing too much video games, gambling, clubbing, anything that lets us not think, not listen to ourselves, not cherish who we are. Next time, when you experience a setback in your life, stop and try to find out what it is truly about. It may have nothing to do with you not getting the job you wanted. It may have nothing to do with what you wanted to achieve or who you wanted to meet or date. Instead, it might be your own heart telling you that the life you live is not what you want. When I talk about your heart, I mean the essence of who you are, the core, the real you, not your subconscious filled with your fears, not your mind limited by anybody's point of view, not your personality shaped and conditioned in response to what society expects from you, not your background, your religion or belief system, but the honest and real you. Look at that roadblock from the perspective of your heart and be grateful that it lets you see your life in a different light. Thank it for giving you a chance to stop and think how you would really want to live, 
what you would really want to experience in your life and what you would really want to give to yourself and others. Think hard. Remember, whatever you decide, make it your conscious choice. Have your life the way you really want it. Don't compare yourself or your life to others. Everybody and everything on this planet is unique. Every grain of sand, a snowflake, a blade of grass, a plant, an animal, a human being, a cloud, a mountain, wherever you look, you will not find two things that are entirely the same. You are unique, one among billions, and so is your life story. Make it truly yours. You have the power to do that. You are a powerful creator, and you can influence your reality with your thoughts. We know it already from quantum physics. And if you haven't noticed that yet, sooner or later, you too will learn that that's the way it is. Your life can be entirely the way you want it. And when you find out how you really want it, according to what's in your heart, you'll be able to make it that way. Remember, your life is your own journey. Its distance is measured by the beauty of your heart, not by the length of it, not even by what you achieve in it. Your life is a journey that allows you to become who you are meant to be, and who you are meant to be is entirely up to you. And now I would like you to relax and repeat after me in your mind a very useful affirmation, which we practice for a few weeks. The affirmation comes from my book 365 plus 1, Affirmations to Create a Great Life, and goes as follows. I let go of my worries. I know life will support me if I fully embrace my own worth. I am a unique human being, one in billions, with my own story to tell in this life. I let my story unfold without fear of the future. I trust my own process. I trust that all is happening for my best. Good. Very well done. It is important to repeat such statements in order to rewire our brain and to affect our subconscious. I was talking in details how to reprogram our subconscious in our previous show you can find it in the archives of January's shows on my official website. One of the most important things in changing our thinking to be more positive is repetition. Another one is an appropriate environment to use such affirmations so that our subconscious would accept the message. And our shows provide such environment for our subconscious. We will repeat this affirmation again at the end of the show during our usual routine, a short relaxation in which I am guiding you to help you in the process of reprogramming your subconscious. And during our shows, I will be giving you more and more useful tips, helping you to build and live the life you want. I will answer some of your questions related to our today's topic, what to do when we experience setbacks, delays or obstacles in our life and how to turn such situations around so that we start living the life we want. The life you want is yours with Johanna Kern. 
Time for answering questions. The first question is from Alice. I lost my job of 10 years and I am devastated. It was more than my job, it was my career. I heavily invested by going to a graduate school to obtain later the job I wanted. I prided myself in being a true professional. I loved what I was doing, but now I feel angry and hopeless. I won't find the same passion or motivation in other jobs. How can I turn this experience into a positive one? Alice, it is not surprising that you feel that way. You followed your dream. You were living your dream for many years, and then it got crashed. Of course you feel hopeless and frustrated. Of course you feel angry. And it is perfectly okay that you feel that way. It is also important that you would release those emotions before you start looking for the remedy for your situation. At first you need to process emotionally what happened and it is important that you process that. So it's not releasing your emotions would keep you stuck in self-pity, in anger, in blaming the world or whoever you want to blame for what happened to you. So it's okay. Feel the way. Then try to distance yourself to the emotions. Remember that emotions are our choice. We can let them influence us or we can start monitoring them. Every emotion can be monitored except for emotions that are involuntary as for instance when we meet a lion on our path and we emotionally react to that situation every other situation in life every stressful situation does not have to contribute to our emotions to have power over us so release your emotions and then think what would be your next step yes there is a dramatic change in your life but remember that life is a constant change notice and accept the fact that things in life change there is no guarantee for anything and we all know that already things change and your situation has changed too however it does not mean that the change is bad for you it is a change it is exactly what it is a change in your circumstances it does not mean that you have to give up your dreams that you have to stop living your passion, that you have to give in, that you have to feel that you fail. After you process your emotions, accept what is, otherwise you'll get stuck in self-pity or anger and won't be able to choose a reaction that will be in alignment with how you want your life to be. Focus on how you can progress through this experience. What kind of life wisdom you have gained? You need to ask yourself the following questions. Why do I think I subconsciously attracted this situation in my life? What kind of opportunity it gives me? And what may yet happen because of that? What do I need to realize to overcome this roadblock? What is it that I didn't do in my life to make it the way I want it? Try to find out what it is truly about. There might be a deeper, more important meaning to what is happening in your life than what you see on the surface. Perhaps you needed to stop and have a good, fresh look at your life. Perhaps where you were going wasn't really in tune with your heart and you simply didn't know about it because your mind got used to perpetuating the thought. It is a possibility. I suggest you might start thinking about that. Assess your situation not coming from your fears and frustration. Assess the situation from a different point of view. And I know you can do it. Look at it that way. Is it really the end of the world? 
does it really stop me from pursuing my passions and my dreams? Look at how many people, while pursuing their dreams, experience many setbacks and they keep going on, but with a different approach. Realize also how far you have already come. You've done much more than you could have imagined before. And you survived, I am sure, many setbacks and difficult situations in your life. Everything is simply an experience. This is another experience. You are strong enough. You are powerful enough to survive this one as well. You need to trust yourself more. You need to believe in your own power. You are a strong and powerful creator. And you can create what you want over and over and over again. This is simply an experience. This doesn't defy you. This only helps you to understand yourself. Look inside your heart and see why what you have been doing thus far needed to change. It's all what it is about. It's about you discovering more of who you are. And this situation, believe it or not, will help you to do so. Start from a place this time that is true to who you are. And perhaps you were in such place before, but remember, we constantly grow, we constantly progress and evolve. Perhaps the job that you lost doesn't suit anymore who you have become. Think about it that way. And when you do so, miracles happen. You will know what to do and the world will support you in all possible ways. In the meantime, look for inspiration to feel more positive about life and yourself. Look for examples and stories of people being successful in your field. Of course, do not compare yourself with others or the situation, but look at them as good examples of how things can turn out, how things can be done. Be happy for those people. Never envy them. And I tell you why. There is an interesting characteristic to our brain. Our brain on the subconscious level, makes no difference between our own and others' happiness. When we see somebody's good fortune, it's important to be happy for them and celebrate their good luck, as if they were our best friends and we wish them well. We can find our own joy in other people's happiness. Our brain will associate that feeling with our own success, with our own dreams coming true. And we will attract people and situations in our life that will help us to live the life we want. Good luck, Alice. I know you can do it. You have done it before and you will do it again. The life you want is yours with Johanna Kern. The next question is from Steve. My wife left me for a better man. I know it sounds self-destructive and dramatic, but objectively speaking, I think it's true. I believe it is my fault because I didn't love her enough and I didn't attend to her enough. She tried many times to tell me that I was neglecting her, but I guess she didn't get through to me. Three months ago, she told me that she met her dream guy in her yoga class and that she wants to move out. She said she hates the house and I can keep it if I want it. When I came back from work three weeks ago, she was already gone. Her lawyer called me two days after that. I told him I want her to come back, but she doesn't want that. She wouldn't even speak with me. We've been married for five years and we don't have any children. I feel depressed frustrated, and I don't know what else to do. Breakups and divorces are among the top three most stressful situations in our life. And you have to congratulate yourself that you are handling it pretty well. You still go to work. You still try to fight 
for your wife to come back? You have been asking yourself questions, what have you done wrong, instead of blaming her for leaving you? It seems like you are on a good way to resolve that situation and to be able to continue with your life no matter whether your wife will come back to you or not. It's been only three weeks and you have already done something to resolve the situation, to find out what you can do, what will be your next step, instead of letting yourself be overwhelmed, pitying yourself and being a victim of the situation. You are a very strong person and I do not think that your wife left you for a better man. I believe she might have left you, as you yourself have noticed, because there wasn't enough caring, enough romance, enough safety in your marriage, a partnership, a marriage. For it to be successful needs to be the priority in our life. It cannot take the second place after our job, our passions, or anything with what we preoccupy ourselves. Many people, when they begin the relationship, do not realize that. We often seek partners for the simple reason of not being alone in the world or because our status will look better in the eyes of society, our employers, or whoever or whatever is important to us. Often we are scared of being alone. Often we have been brought up in a way to believe that when we reach a certain age, we need to get married, etc. There may be various reasons for why we get married, for why we look for a relationship, and it has nothing to do with us willing to give that relationship enough time and effort for it to flourish and to become mature. When we seek relationships for mentioned reasons, sooner or later, they stop serving our needs and we go back to feeding our fears the fear of being alone the fear of not being appreciated enough the fear of not being worthy anything good in life relationships fall apart when fears kick in after the initial three or five years of marriage it isn't uncommon that people realize that the marriage wasn't what they were expecting to be, that it didn't give them the sense of safety they were looking for. And until we learn how to be happy on our own, how to feel valuable on our own, there will not be a partner in the entire world that will be capable of giving us what we need inside. Your life has changed. Your relationship has changed. You both have changed. And it was time to take your relationship to another level where you can both grow together and support each other. You started to drift apart. You have not been attentive enough, as you said, to your wife, and she felt neglected. What does it mean? It means that either she or both of you were not ready for a mature and fulfilling relationship. I don't know what will happen next, because it might be that she indeed will come back if you approach her and talk with her after perhaps her emotions come down, or that you indeed will divorce and end up on your own. Whatever happens, this situation gives you both opportunity to have a fresh look at your life to look inside yourselves and to find out what it is that you truly want from life, what it is that you truly want from yourself, what it is that you may or may not expect from your partner. Nobody can live our life. We need to live it ourselves. Focus on what you have learned from this experience and it is important that you would be honest with yourself and with your wife, once perhaps she will give you the chance to talk with her. And when you will be honest with yourself and her, perhaps you will be able to work out your problem.
Perhaps not. Whatever happens, you both can start fresh, either staying in your marriage or moving on, and creating a different opportunity for yourselves to live the life you want, to live the life you can enjoy, to live the life that would maintain your happiness. It is hard. It is devastating to lose the person we love. But that too cannot stop us from living our life, from experiencing ourselves, from becoming who we are meant to become. You need to trust yourself. You need to trust your own process. You need to trust your life. When you start from a new place, everything will become clear. And you will know how to proceed, what to do, and what not to do. And of course, you need to reevaluate your needs when it comes to relationships. You need to find out, educate yourself what it takes to create a good relationship. I wish you the best of luck. I think you are a great man. I think you are on your way to have in your life a relationship that would be entirely fulfilling to you. You are not stuck in blaming anybody for what has happened. And you don't need to blame yourself. Live your life. Give it a chance. Give yourself a good chance. Good luck, Stephen. The life you want is yours. With Johanna Kern. And now it's time for the next step in our game. Nine pennies can change your life. In the fourth step of our game, you need to put one investment penny in your Better Life account. That is the nice box container which you keep in a safe, pleasant place in your home, work or school. In other words, put one IP in your BLA. Please go back to the description of the game on my blog, on my official site, if you don't know what we are talking about. With this investment penny, you are buying powerful thoughts of trusting your process and remaining loyal to your heart. Reference for the fourth step. In our story, the younger brother continued walking ahead, although there was nothing yet inside. Determined, he kept going on, until the circumstances changed and he got to the patch of greenery beside the river. Time limit for step four is one week. Till our next show. Congratulate yourself. Since you've gotten to this point, there is no doubt that you can stay on the road to a better life. No matter how long it takes, you will be walking ahead until you get where you want. Follow your heart and continue on the road. Have fun with it. If you don't remember the story in the game or how to do the fourth step, you can simply go to my official website www.johannakern.com and find the Nine Pennies Can Change Your Life game on my blog. We are adding there the next steps in the game after each show. The life you want is yours. With Johanna Kern. And now it is time for our usual short relaxation, in which you will be guided to repeat some affirmations that can help you to reprogram your subconscious and deal with your subconscious fears. The affirmations come from my book 365 plus 1, Affirmations to Create a Great Life. The book contains a step-by-step -step program which I designed based on many years of experience in counseling people to help them achieve what they wanted the most. I also recorded some CDs that can be listened to in a state of deep relaxation while I am guiding the listeners through the process of reprogramming their subconscious. These or similar tools are very effective and you can find on the market 
whatever will suit your preferences and needs. I talked in the previous show about how important it is to deal with our subconscious programming while we are changing our thoughts to be more positive so that we could create the life we want. Please check the archives of the show on my website to find the shows you want to listen to. If you are ready, I'd like you to listen to the following. Find a comfortable position, sitting or lying down. Close your eyes and let your arms rest alongside your body. Good. Now take a deep breath and slowly let it out. Take another deep breath and again slowly let it out. Then, while taking in the next breath, let it fill you up from toes to head and add an image to it, a pleasant dim light glowing everywhere inside you. Keep breathing and observing the light inside from the count of ten to one. Ten Nine Eight Seven Six Five Four Three Two One Relax and let the dim light inside shine in every single cell in your body. Good. In order to reprogram your subconscious for the life you want, you need to learn how to replace your negative thinking with positive thoughts. Your life is not your enemy. Your life is your loyal friend. Acknowledge it. Appreciate it. You are worth living the most wonderful life. Repeat after me in your mind. I let go of my worries. I know life will support me if I fully embrace my own worth. I am a unique human being, one in billions, with my own story to tell in this life. I let my story unfold without fear of the future. I trust my own process. I trust that all is happening for my best. Good. Well done. Remember, the life you want on the subconscious level is already yours. And now you will learn how to access it so that you can start living it in your day-to-day reality. You have learned a lot from your past and now you can be free from it. Any hardship you have experienced has only made you stronger, wiser, and more compassionate. Repeat in your mind, 
I will treasure what I have learned through suffering and struggling as a good lesson about who I am. I know that I am powerful. I know that I can trust and respect myself. I completely release my past and live in the now. Well done. You can move forward now in your life. The life you want can be yours. Make it your reality. Enjoy it and love it. You are a powerful creator and you will get what you want and live the life you want. Now you can open your eyes at the count of one to five. One, two, three, four, five. Open your eyes. Excellent. You've done very well. You are fully relaxed, yet energized and happy to continue with your day. Thank you for participating in our relaxation and for listening to our show. In the next show, we will talk more about what can contribute and help us to build the life we want, how to overcome our fears and obstacles, and, of course, I will be responding on air to your questions without revealing your name. Please send your questions to this email address radio at johannakern.com As usual, I wish you the most wonderful week until we meet again at the same time. See you next week. Have a good one. The life you want is yours. With Johanna Kern.